Saints, good evening to you. We are so overjoyed to have you with us tonight as we worship our Lord together. Please pray for our dear sister, Miss Sarah. She is going in for a follow-up surgery. As you know, she had surgery on her back. She shared with us on Saturday. Um, and she's going in for a follow-up procedure tomorrow. So please pray that that will be successful with no complication. Um, so just please pray for her, Miss Sarah. We love you. And also pray for Penelope, Miss Altagracia's daughter. She's getting married this coming Friday. As you know, she had a really big health scare about a week and a half ago where she was experiencing stroke-like symptoms. She was in the hospital. And praise the Lord, she's been discharged and tests came back negative. So just praying that she doesn't experience another episode ever like, like this ever again. Um, so just continue to pray for her and just that it would be such a joyful day celebrating her and her husband with family and friends. And Miss Altagracia, we love you. We're praying for you and your family. And saints, let's pray right now and we'll worship. Lord, we just thank you so much as we've been reading in the Gospel of Luke, Lord, just the importance of prayer and Lord, I just thank you that we call on your name and you hear us and you answer us and just what a joy and a blessing it is to be a part of a body of believers that, Lord, when we come together, we call on your name and we know that where two or more are gathered, you are in our midst and it's just such a beautiful thing to behold and to be a part of, Lord, calling on your name together and we just pray, Lord, we lift up Miss Sarah and the tomorrow that it would just go smoothly, remove any anxiety, and just help the doctors, give them wisdom, just that her recovery would be smooth, and we pray for Penelope, Lord, we pray that her wedding day would just be absolutely beautiful, Lord, that nothing would hinder it, and we just thank you for restoring her, and that she was able to be discharged from the hospital, Lord, continue just to be with her, Lord, and her family, soon-to-be husband. Lord, we thank you for Miss Altagracia and Mr. Felix. Just be with them on this joyous day. And Lord, we just, we know there are so many requests. I think of Isaac, who is undergoing treatment for leukemia. Um, Lord, just so many requests that we have that we bring before you. And we know, Lord, just how beautiful it is that you do not grow tired of hearing your children, Lord, call out on your name. Because, Lord, we know that your name powerful. We know that you are powerful, Lord. And we just thank you for who you are, Lord. We want to worship you for who you are. You never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. In your name we pray. Amen.
Saints, welcome to you this evening. Welcome to you this evening. I'm so glad that you have joined us. I'm taking a little break this evening. I'll tell you more about that in just a little bit. Let me give you some announcements. If you're new to our channel, I'm super excited that you've joined us. I hope you love the Word of God. We love the Word of God at Abide Christian Fellowship. We are constantly in the Word of God because we believe that the Bible teaches that's the only way we're going to be renewed in our minds. In fact, the Bible says that. So thank you for joining us. And a um, couple very quick announcements. We have the last men's breakfast of this year is this coming Sunday, November 12th, 8.30 to 10.30 at our brother Jeff's house. There's a sign up. Um, if you weren't there Saturday, this past Saturday for some reason, you'd like for me to put you on the sign up list. Please let me know. I'll get your name on there. And yes, I'm talking to you, Scott, Ted, um, what other brothers? Mark. 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 I know Mark's going to be there. Did you see so that? Jeff, well, of course, Jeff's going to be there <laughs> unless he plans to leave the house vacant. So, uh, oh, Mr. Kelly, I'm going to put JD. your name on there. JD, I'm going to put your name on there. Reggie. Reggie, I'm going to put Ted. your name on there. Yeah, I said Ted. So. Yeah. Your names are going on there. We expect you to show up. Men's breakfast, um, most wanted. <laughs> men's breakfast. Men's breakfast. Sunday, Mr. November Chris. 12th. This coming Sunday. Mr. Chris. My brother, Chris. Your name is on there. Second on there. Thomas. Your name is on there, too. So I'm putting names, man. I'm taking names. <laughs> right? I'm taking names. I'm putting them down. Uh, it's a wonderful time, brothers. I love you, and I look forward to seeing you. Ah, one more. Dave. David de Colombia. Dave, you're going, your name's going on there, bro. Mm. All right. <laughs> and here's another thing. Our agape meal this month, the month of November, you know, it's Thanksgiving, right? We're going to have our agape meal a Saturday early. Yeah, Saturday early, November 18th. I got a special announcement to make to you on November 18th. So I would hope that you're going to be there. It's going to be a Thanksgiving themed agape dinner. Let me tell you. I do not want anybody who calls Abide Christian Fellowship their home church to miss an opportunity to have a Thanksgiving dinner with your family. We are family, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're a spiritual family. You know, a spiritual family means more than a natural family because a spiritual family is forever. And there is not one brother or sister that I want to have, you know, spend Thanksgiving by themselves. So we do this every year. More details will follow, but November 18th, put it on your calendar. We're having our agape dinner a little bit early, one Saturday early, and communion. We're going to share communion that day as well, because that is the greatest thing that as Christians we're thankful for, is that Christ died on our behalf. And then, I'm giving you plenty notice, Marriage Fellowship, December 3rd. It's also a Sunday, Doris and Larry's house. Thank you. This is an Aquila and Priscilla couple. We love them to pieces, two to four. And that's going to be our final one for this year as well. I cannot believe I'm even speaking like that. It is gone. This year is basically now goodbye. So here's a topic that I'd like to introduce I think if I was to say what is the single most important topic or top of the list, say topics that I have had meetings for where people call and they want to meet with me or meet with my wife and I, if I had to say the number one thing, right, that beats out every other topic, it's this topic right here, the topic of worry worry. And it's true, we're all plagued to one degree or another with worry and anxiety. I'm not exempt. I too have fears of worry and anxiety. Uh, fears, another thing, you know, worry doesn't travel by itself. It brings with it anxiety. It brings with it fear. This all started in the garden. It's nothing new. When Adam and Eve fell from that place of fellowship with God, they became fearful. In fact, they say it. We were afraid. We hid ourselves. 
And that fear and that worry, they're worried that God's going to do something, going to hurt them or whatever, but now they're hiding. And this has plagued the human race since the fall of mankind. There it is, worry, anxiety, fear, fear of the unknown. It can be excessive to the point where it can paralyze a person. I've talked to people who are afraid to even walk out of their house. They struggle in this area. And I've talked to people that are anxious. Like I said, I, I myself, it's, it's everybody. It's every one of us to one degree or another. The Lord doesn't want us to be anxious. He tells us that. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Make your requests known unto God. And he says also to us, do not worry. Do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. God's going to take care of you. And these are two things that the Lord is very serious about. In fact, his salutation oftentimes, and the Bible's riddled with this phrase from Genesis to Revelation, fear not, fear not. And the reason there's so many fear knots in the Bible is because we are prone to fear. In fact, it reminds me of the hymn, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. And then the request comes in that hymn, take my heart, oh, take and seal it with thy spirit from above. And that's our hearts. We're prone to wander into the weeds of fear and anxiety, and worry. We can worry about everything. We can worry about worrying. We could be worried that we worry too much. And then some people think that worrying is almost in a sense necessary or a responsibility. Like we need to worry about our children or about our finances or about our health. Like this is a necessary thing that we need to do. Nowhere in the Bible Do you read that, that it's a necessary thing to do? And so with that, I want you to listen to this teaching from R.C. Sproul. He's a teacher that's going on to be with the Lord. He's someone that I listen to periodically, and he's encouraged me. I pray he encourages you this evening. And he has a fantastic, a wonderful teaching on worrying, on anxiety, and I pray it blesses you. So don't tune out. Stay tuned in. Stay tuned in. I'm just taking a little breather. Stay tuned in and listen to this short teaching, all right, from R.C. Sproul. And let me say this. Let me absolutely say this as well. This past Saturday, and it's happened oftentimes at Abide Christian Fellowship, we are a praying church. And I will tell you my own personal experience that some of the sweetest times that we've had in the presence of the Lord, where we really were visited by the Holy Spirit and Christ was manifest to us, has been in our times of prayer. We are a praying church. This Saturday was no different. Our Lord met with us in the, in the point of our need. In the place of our need, our Lord delights to meet with us. Can I tell you something? I just want to encourage you with this. The greatest asset that you and I have is weakness. That's the greatest attribute. Did you know that Jesus is attracted to weakness? In fact, when you read in the gospel accounts, we read that it was always the neediest, the weakest, the most frail person that our Lord was attracted to. Mm-hmm. That man who is possessed by a legion of devils, Thousands of devils have possessed him. That's the man in greatest need. In that community, in that part of the country, this was the man with the greatest need. And our Lord delivered him of all those demons. How about the person who, the man, who in the synagogue had a withered hand? He's in a corner. He's ashamed. He's trying to hide that part of him that's withered. And that's all of us, right? We try to hide that area of us that is dried up, that is withered. And so this man, perhaps, been in the synagogue many times before, but he always came in the same way, through the back entrance perhaps, and would hide his hand, would hide that area of his body that was withered. He was ashamed. He was put out. He was marginalized. Whatever the case may be. 
but he's not part of the average crowd. He just sits in the back somewhere. And Jesus, when Jesus walks into the synagogue, he's the man with the greatest need. He's the man who's on the outskirts. He's ashamed. He's hiding. And Jesus says, come out and stand in the midst of us. Be in the middle. Think about that. The man with the greatest need is where Christ focused his attention, his affection, okay, and his attraction is to the person in the room with the greatest need. That man receives a healing. How about the widow of Nain? She's coming out of her town. She's about to bury her only son. This woman is not praying. She's not seeking the Lord. She's grieving. She's completely alone. Her husband has died. And now her only son, her only beloved son, is also dead. Without seeking the Lord, without praying to the Lord, Jesus reaches in that casket and raises her dead son from the dead. Why? Because at that moment, that woman had the greatest need. And so listen, saints, when we pray, we attract the Lord to us. We get his attention. He comes to visit among us because we have great needs. Listen, am I telling the truth? Come on. Look at your spiritual condition. We're destitute spiritually. I'm in great need spiritually. I'm in great need physically. I need the Lord to heal my mind. I need the Lord to heal my tongue, my ways, the way I think. I need the Lord in every in every sense of the word. I'm the neediest at Abide Christian Fellowship. I'm not the strongest. I'm the weakest. And I know one thing for sure is that the Lord gives grace to the humble and to those who admit that they're in need. And so I have to say, I have to say that the most blessed times that we've had at Abide, whether we're meeting in a men's group or at a retreat or in a women's gathering or corporately uh, church on Saturdays, the greatest time that we've had in the presence of the Lord has been in our prayer time. Now, I'm going to leave you with this. I will tell you what, in this nation which we live, if preaching was going to change this nation, it would have been changed a long time ago. We got great preachers in this nation. If change in this nation was going to come, and change in the church for that matter, was going to come through worship, we have some of the most beautiful, talented worship in the world, in this country. This country is filled with talent. Can I tell you where change is going to happen? It's not going to come through great preaching or great worship. It's going to come through prayer. Mm -hmm. Through a church that's anguishing in prayer. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Admitting how weak and how much in need we are of Jesus. That's how change is going to happen in the church. Mm -hmm. That's how change is going to happen in the country. If we're ever going to see change, it's going to come through prayer. Not through preaching. And not through worship. No, through prayer. I'm not saying that preaching and worship are not important. I'm not saying that. Those things are important. Uh, but we can't neglect prayer. We cannot neglect prayer. This Saturday was one of the many Saturdays that we've had a visitation, if you will. A wonderful time. Because the Lord delights to hear us pray and to admit our need to Him and to one another. So be blessed, saints. Listen to this teaching by R.C. Sproul. I pray that it encourages your heart. I pray that if in any way, shape, or form, even today in this moment, you are struggling with fear or you're struggling with anxiety or worry, something in the future, uh, you've received a report from a, from a doctor's office or you've been told some sad news or somebody has gone off the rails and your life is turning upside down, we're prone. We're prone to wander from the place of peace that the Lord wants to bring us to and keep us in, right? Peace be with you, saints, right? May the Lord be with you and may his peace reign in your hearts. Give your attention to Pastor R.C. Sproul. He's going to bless your hearts. Thank you for joining us and Lord willing, see you Saturday. Mm -hmm.